All right, got my helper. So right after making the videos on the diesel heater and the chainsaw, both have had problems, which I thought I'd update a bit on. Diesel heater's tripping the fuse on the house. I think that just the 12 volt power supply has got some moisture into it or um, has malfunctioned. It was a super cheap one off eBay. It was about 20 bucks, um, probably for a server rack or a computer. I'll take it apart and you can have a look inside. I didn't do that last time. So I think first things first, we'll just kick this panel off and push everything outside so it can work on the other side of the building. Can I have the screwdriver? I can't be bothered going to get my drill. Just use the Phillips head. There's only two screws that hold this panel in. So you undo that, that should come off now. Put that outside. Panel lifts out. We'll just put him outside. That'll do. Had a heap of rain last night, and you can just see the excavator down there through those trees. I finished the driveway yesterday, and um, just in time because we had a downpour last night at midnight. Um, so hopefully that's held up. I'll go down and check it out later and you can see a link in this video for that one I just finished editing so that'll be good. So originally there's a power board just here that feeds That unit and I thought maybe it just had some moisture blown in. We do get um, The southerly wind and the rain comes through here. There's not much of an eave so water can get up here but I bypassed that board went straight to the power point with a different cable and It still just keeps tripping We'll take the top off here, it's four screws, and we'll have a look inside. Oh, Alaska, that's probably all my panels not working. Oh, it's just the back of it, that's alright. So for, I didn't really explain it in the last one, but for anyone wondering why this looks so janky, the housing is made out of recycled shipping pallets that I just got from the side of the road. And that lid is the bottom plate for one of my water tanks. So it's completely made out of free to me materials. That's why it looks a bit jank and it just had to be a waterproof container. So, and you never see it in the back of the house. That's the whole reason for it looking so bad, I guess. So now we can see in here a bit, we've got a little Spider over here, just chilling. Can I have that screwdriver? We'll flick him off. Oh, he's dead. This looks pretty clean. Obviously some wind can get up in here. There's a couple of leaves. That's the computer power supply. This guy was just feeding straight through the 12 volt um, power supply for the, the heater itself. And then that's the top layer. The bottom layer had the air intakes and a computer fan to pull air through. And I just put a flywire piece across the front there to stop any bugs going straight into it because um, just in case it was a, it looked like a pretty good home for insects. It's a couple of little signs of life but nothing crazy so it does look pretty good. It's a little bit dusty. So the one cool thing about these cheap power supplies is that um, you can see it's got multi-voltage multi output so the red and the black wire here running a diesel heater while the I've used blue for positive but the blue and the black here go underneath through this hole and feed the 12 volt fan underneath so I'm going to disconnect the fan and start isolating where the short is going to be so this guy and this guy and we'll tuck those across here That's running. Obviously I haven't turned the heater on yet, but power supply is functioning as it should when it turns on. So grab this control panel, which is gonna be really hard to see out here. I think I briefly mentioned it in the last video as well. I lost, I left this outside in the, in the rain, so we actually ended up with um, no backlight. So it does work, but you really wanna be inside to make it work. For now, let's see what I can, I might have to put it under my jumper and have a look. 
All right, so that's one. It hasn't shorted yet. So it could have been a case of having moisture in here that's now dried out. Um, I don't think it's going to be the fan underneath. This is an outlet down here for a fan, so there's a fan just sitting here blowing air out. <laughs> this is the exhaust outlet, and this is actually a floor pan from a 65 Mustang that I had lying around um, that had rusted out. So that's a section of history being cut in there. It's actually, the other problem here is I might be out of diesel, so it looks pretty low. I might go and fill it up quickly. Pumps firing up, power supply is running as it should. Starting to put out some air through this pipe. Yeah, it's hot air coming out. Yeah, you can smell the fumes coming through that, so there's definitely a cross contamination in there of the exhaust and intake air, um, which is really weird because it's just taking in air from here. Shouldn't be any exhaust around this side. So this probably needs to be raised up like a snorkel away from that area, that's what I might do for that. That's cranking over now. So that's getting up, it's 50 or 60 degrees, so we'll, we'll turn that off. So, super weird, I might, um, I might connect the fan back up, put some diesel on there and see if it shorts out again. And if it, if this doesn't short out, like it works, then this is a pointless video and we'll move on to the chainsaw. Walking backwards. Good girl. I had about a hundred mils of diesel lying around, so I put that in. Hopefully, that's enough just to test it. And um, yeah, we'll see what happens when it shorts. If it doesn't short, then boring video. Hit on. Get rid of the screwdrivers. Give it another test. All right, that's cranking along now. Uh, I'm gonna put it down to just having moisture in the box, so that was a bit of a let down of a video but uh, at least you got to see inside it so I just well the last thing I'll just mention was the reason why I did this computer fan on the bottom to let air out, come out here uh, is because this is a muffler inside a wooden box that definitely eats up a lot you can see a bit of carbon build up here but um there's a lot of hot air coming straight out here um, so I just wanted to draw in here that hot air trapped inside the wooden box out because I didn't want to fire at the back of the house. So that's why I did a computer fan on the bottom there, which has been working really well. Like this thing stood up to a year of being outside. Um, obviously had some moisture, I think, in there, but it should be good. And I think we'll just leave it like that for today and put the lid back on it. thing which is definitely broken and not like the diesel heater is the chainsaw um, lately it's just been a bit a bit crap you use it for about half an hour and the chain would loosen up um, not just with the heat or it slacking off I just noticed that no matter how tight I could set it it kept on loosening so I had a look at the tensioning system on it and it was fine when I went to back off these nuts completely that hold the bar on I noticed one was like loose, like all the time loose. Put a little bit of brack pressure on it, see what happens. I think the whole stud's coming in. Doesn't look too bad. Right there, there's a bit of cross threading, just there. And definitely, I'm going to say the top's cross threaded, like that doesn't come off. Let's grab some vices and see if we can take that nut off. That is mangled. There is nothing left in there. So yeah, possibly I over tightened it I reckon and um... Hello? So that's going to need a new stud for sure. So hopefully the thread in the actual chainsaw blocks okay. Otherwise we'll have to tap that out and go to a larger size. I'm going to see if I can recycle one from an old chainsaw. I've got a couple so let's go and see if I can pull it out and maybe it's the same. Got to take a moment to plug my doors that I made. From, from work that were thrown out. There were old crappy white ones that I sanded back and got some hinges on. I even managed to fit a door handle back to it. Still using the existing little lock here. Weren't quite the right size. I had to put on some bevels on the edge to block the light and the breeze, but it goes all right. And that red, red gum sleeper at the bottom scrubbed up pretty good too once I planed it back and oiled it. Finally getting some doors in the shed. 
still needs a bit of a clean up, but better than nothing. So I think definitely this saw would have the same um, stud going through, but since I've been put the smaller bar and chain on here from my incorrect ordering technically, um, this thing's been ripping along. So I love it. I love the size with the smaller bar as a secondary saw. So I'm going to keep this and not f stuff around with it too much. So I think I'm going to have a go at taking this guy apart. It works, it's just, it's just old and uh, not a very powerful saw. Alright, it's a bit cleaner. Let's try and take these guys off. Aha, janky camera holder strikes again. I think after all that, these aren't even double threaded studs. These are just molded into a piece of plastic. So there's nothing, if I take that out, there's nothing behind that. It's only, it only goes back like that far. So these are completely useless for replacements as it is. So that's awesome. So I ordered a set of studs from eBay. We'll wait for those to come for the other store. In the meantime, just to get the big guy working, and I know I said it wouldn't touch this one because it's been really good. I'm gonna take a stud off this one, and then we'll go and fix the big saw, and we'll put the eBay studs on this guy. All right, so the studs. Probably haven't come out of the same factory at least, but they look similar enough. Cross threaded, and then you go. Different size shank in the middle, but they both thread the same nuts, so we'll give that a crack and see what happens. I think we'll, we'll give that a go. We'll see if it backs off with vibrations and running it for a while. I mean, the last one would run for about half an hour before the chain got too loose and would skip off. And the downside is you're wearing your bar and your chain out quicker when it's all loose and not guided correctly in the channel. So if that loosens up after the first go, half an hour or so, I'm gonna order an oversized stud kit and we'll have to tap those in, but we'll see how it goes. Right, I'll get back to you about that. Hopefully that's all done and fixed. So, sorry for the uh, boring content with a heater that fixed itself and a saw that was running anyway. I guess that's a weak point on this saw, and I, I know I probably over tightened it a little bit, but you know, I do the same tightening on my old hus huskies and stills and um, haven't had any problems there, so. They're probably not the strongest um, aluminium block that it's screwing into, so you probably want to be careful with that if you do have one of them. Um, in saying that, I haven't stripped out the other guy that's had, been there for three years, just this one. Um, so it could have been a defective stud or something to start with. Uh, see how it goes. For now I've got a working heater and a saw, so I'm good. Alright, take it easy. See you in the next one.